Chris Burns and welcome to The Network, hard talk with a matrix of newsmakers. The headlines. Social networking can help swing European Parliament elections, especially among youth. Some MEPs credit their victories to their tweets, blogs and Facebook pages. How could that virtual battleground translate into votes this time and fight a steadily falling turnout? How can it sensitize voters about just how important the vote is? But how fair or unfair can social networking be in showing just who the candidate is and in attacking the policies or character of one's opponent? And is the short format easier for populists attacking the mainstream? How to dumb down or condense complex issues and their solutions in 141 characters or less? Now joining us on this special edition here at the European Parliament, Radvile Morkunaite Mikulenjene. She's a Lithuanian conservative member of the European Parliament, a member of the EU 40 group of young parliamentarians. Uh, Nicolas Beigelt, he's a researcher in communications and social media who lectures at EHEX Brussels, that's a journalism and communications uh, school. And Andreas Mulalaila, he's an EU political blogger. Your web page is cosmopolito.org. Let's start with a question for all of you, uh, starting with Radvile. These are the first Twitter-driven, we could say Twitter-driven Twitter, Twitter -driven European Parliament elections. What's the impact that you see so far? Well, I think that in general, uh, social media doesn't make politics better, but it makes and it helps to spread message better, that's for sure. And we are living in uh, times when uh, we want to consume fast, we want fast messages, we want to get fast uh, to the information, so Twitter, Facebook and all the other means are the perfect instruments. Okay, well, Nicolas, do you see a, a positive or a negative effect by Twitter? Uh, the effect is positive for, um, for EU speech in general. Basically, the arguments are becoming maybe uh, easier to understand for citizens, at least those that are active on Twitter. But what is important to understand is that the audience is still very limited. Okay, and Andreas, what do you think? I think it will not have a big impact. Um, um, it's only helpful for those MEPs that have invested heavily into their social media profiles over the last couple of years. Most people still um, uh, find their information via television, so it will have a minimal role in the upcoming elections. Okay, Radvile, hopefully you're not wasting your time, but uh, what about the fact that they're, the populists are using this quite a, quite a bit, aren't they? Uh, isn't that a danger that they're profiting from social networking, perhaps over more mainstream parties like yours? Well, I think that the populists usually use, uh, like, uh, they are based on slogans, their, their so to say, uh, agenda. And maybe it's easier for them to communicate, but um, I think that uh, you, you only need to find a way how to formulate and how to tackle the, um, I don't know, the group of people you want. All right, well, how do you do that, Nicolas? I think you need to adapt uh, your discourse also to the media. Uh, the populists, the youth skeptics, have done so. I mean, when you think about the slogan of Marine Le Pen in France yeah. uh, against Brussels for France, it is really powerful, it is really aggressive, but everyone understands, even if it's tragic. So the EU needs to find a similar discourse pro-European. Okay, well, Andreas, you've got a rather irreverent uh, cosmopolito.org. Well, what about the fact that uh, condensing over, can, can be oversimplifying? There, there are some people who are saying more Europe, more Europe, but that's backfiring on some people, isn't it? Oh, yeah, because uh, people are now... Um critical towards these sort of slogans and um, but social media as such is very bad in terms of um, uh, finding a compromise or um, for moderating voices that actually want to sort of um, uh, explain policies uh, so we mm. actually need new forms of explaining more complex uh, topics. Radvila, how do you avoid that sort of danger of, of oversimplifying? Well, I've just uh, simply tried to do what is natural for me, and I think that people appreciate and uh, they feel uh, uh, whenever a person is na natural. So um, I try to focus on uh, what is important in my job. I know that it's important for people, and I add some uh, personal uh, uh, attitude, and okay. that's it. I don't want to be, you know, uh, on, communicate by slogans or. Uh, you need to do everything and, and to find the best. It's way. tricky, isn't it? Not to, not to dumb it down too much. But, um, and Nicolas, here, here's another danger is that some people say that perhaps this social networking is starting to replace the real media, the news media. 
you know, you, you lecture at a journalism school. What do you think? Not yet. I would not say that right now social media is that strong. I mean, the national media, television is still pretty strong and the audience is, is still very limited, like I said. I mean, you have EU bloggers, uh, EU politicians, journalists that are very active on Twitter, but the normal citizen is not really entering this conversation and it is about the conversation. Okay. What about, uh, Andreas, what about the fact that um, uh, you know, some people say that, that social networking is simply preaching to the converted. It's, it, it's just an echo chamber for people who, who are already true believers. Isn't that the danger? Yeah, that's a big danger also with um, Facebook just showing us what we actually like and we follow the, the, the people that we already like. So there's a big uh, um, danger that we actually have this sort of filter bubble uh, where we only see the things we actually believe in and we don't get uh, exposed to sort of opposing views which is not mm. the best thing for political discourse. Now, Radovile, on, on the other hand, could this not be perhaps a way to mobilize the true believers for you? Well, you know, uh, we would like most probably that uh, elections would take uh, place on Facebook, but it's not, <laughs> not, not yet. Uh, but uh, I think that the, it's the most important that people would get information. They, uh, they realize what kind of profile you have and uh, of course, it's impossible by Facebook to gather people together, but it's one of the ways to have direct communication. But does this really work as a get-out-the-vote uh, tool? Uh, some people talk about slacktivists. There was the, the, the British elections uh, in uh, tw 2010. There was a lot more social networking, a lot more activity online, but that didn't translate into people going to the polls. Nicholas, what do you think? Yeah, there, there is uh, still a gap between real online activism and what you really do the day you go to vote. So, so I don't think that you, there is a direct translation of your behavior, your online behavior, and what really happens in the polls in the end. Okay, and uh, Andres, so what, what advice would you have to someone uh, like Radvile to try to make her social networking work better? Um, well, <laughs> that, that's a difficult one. Um, Please. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's really to be authentic and to actually try uh, not to use it only for the election campaign, but actually use it for the, for the whole term and, and try to keep people engaged in the day-to-day -day policy making process. I think this is the key to actually get people interested in EU policy making, which is not really that present in national media uh, in general. Okay, and then and, and some people say, well, yeah, this personality side to it, like you're talking about, that's great. But then, but that doesn't doesn't that sort of subtract from the substance of your message? It becomes sort of a beauty contest, doesn't it? Uh, well, I wouldn't agree. I think uh, you, you feel the you know the the, the the proportions, and but I think that uh, okay, politics is one thing, the essence, the 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 agenda. But on the other hand, I think that pe for people, it's important to feel what kind of person they believe in. And do they find a common denominator over there? Mm. I don't know, by posting what you read, what you like, where you travel. I think it's, it's part of, of the whole system here. Okay, and, and here's another issue that some analysts say that uh, social networking can be great for data mining. That's, that's what happened in, in the Obama campaign, for instance. They're using all that information to better target voters to get them out to vote. The problem here in Europe is data protection. How much are our hands tied from using that tool of data mining. Nicolas. Uh, we, we, we are not yet into a strategic use of social media when it comes to EU elections. Ah. Um, the problem is that, um, I mean, once again, the audience is a national one. Uh, MEPs are competing on a national, in a national context. As such, you cannot treat the EU election as a, as a general circumscription where all Europeans would, uh, would fight together or would, uh, would be all engaged in, in, a, in, a, in a common struggle. That's, that's mm. the main issue, I think, is that we still uh, fight this on a national ground. Uh, Andreas, what do you think about data mining? Well, data mining, I mean, in, in the US that seemed to have worked, and, um, but also they, they invested 10 to 10, 15 percent of their campaign money into it. In Europe, I think we have a very different idea of privacy, and I think people don't share that much publicly on Facebook, so it's really difficult to actually do it uh, like Obama did. Radvile, with all that discussion, how optimistic are you that social networking can swing the election for you? Well, I'm an uh, optimist. I hope that uh, people were following for five years uh, what I was doing and the other colleagues were doing, and uh, I think they are going to evaluate that. Radvile, thank you very much. I'd like to thank all of our guests, Radvile Morkonaite, Mikulenjene, Nicolas Beigelt, and Andreas Mulalaila. I'm Chris Burns, and until next time, thanks for connecting with The Network.